It took me to the museum. But I didn't have permission to live, but we're good now. It's got <laughs> canary in the pool, my right. friend. All right, perfect. Well, welcome everyone to uh, the Corporation of the Township of Bonnet Valley Committee meeting agenda. Today is uh, Tuesday, February 7th, uh, 2023 at 1 30 p.m. We're meeting in the Council Chambers uh, Municipal Building and via Zoom conferencing as well for a delegation. Uh, is there any additions to the agenda? Mayor Murphy, Councillor Buckwald, Councillor Saunderson, Epps. Uh, there's just uh, one uh, that I'll be adding, and it's just under a closed session, uh, and it's just for uh, update of the fire chief recruitment. Uh, so that'll be uh, there'll be two closed session items, and that'll be for identifiable individual. Uh, could I please have a confirmation of the agenda, please? Mm -hmm. Councillor Buckwald. Epps. Yeah. All those in favor? Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, is there any pecuniary interest or the general nature thereof? <laughs> Seeing none. Perfect. Uh, was there any error or omissions with the minutes from the previous meeting? Seeing none, could I have a confirmation? Mayor Murphy, all those in favor? Perfect, thank you very much. And we do have a delegation today from the Municipal Property Assessment Corporation. Uh, we have Jennifer Gruntz and Tracy McIntyre that will be joining us, correct, Annette? Yes. Perfect, and you're just gonna welcome them in. I think they're there. Jennifer, are you there? I'm here. <laughs> Had to do it. Hello, Jennifer. Jennifer and Tracy, can you guys hear us? <laughs> Thank you. Eddie, Bob. Eddie, Bob. I'm sorry, can you hear me now? Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Perfect. And we have both uh, yourself, Je uh, Jennifer and Tracy there as well? No, sorry, just myself. Oh, okay, perfect. I can start a video here. Just give me a second. There. No, it's just me. Awesome. Thanks for jo uh, joining us, Jennifer. Uh, and then, so do you want us to put uh, share screens with you? Or is Annette, do you want to put up the presentation for today? Whatever works for Jennifer. Which is easier for you, Jennifer, to share share your screen or? Um, I can. Uh, give me a second here. I don't. We don't use. I don't typically use Zoom, so I'm just learning. Learning. Huh. How do I share my screen? I can share mine. Uh, we can share ours, and you can walk us through. The present. Sorry, we. I don't. We don't use a lot of Zoom. We use a lot of Teams. Oh. Yeah. There. there we go. Can you see that, Jennifer? Yeah, sorry. I want, it does, that one has a note, eh? Sorry, I could have given you a different one. <clears throat> If you go to the bottom presenting thing, I think I can probably do that. So we're on slide two. Is that good? Uh, sure. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. I'll probably turn this off just so. Okay, so yeah, thank you very much for having me here today. I appreciate um, the delegation. So my name is Jennifer Gruntz. And I am the account manager with the Municipal and Stakeholders Relations with MPAC in Redford County. Um, just a little bit of background about me as I've worked with MPAC for the last 10 to 12 years. My background is in valuation and uh, I've grown up in Redford County, so I'm very familiar with the area. And I'd uh, just like to take a quick second and say thanks to all of you for um, working with me. And I look forward to getting to know you in person. I apologize that I'm not there today, 
that would have been my goal. But I'm hoping that in the next couple of years that we can uh, meet in person and uh, continue our developing relationship. So I look forward to that. Um, it's not only just me, there's myself, Tracy, and plus we have our entire municipal relations team. So if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out to us. That's what we're here to help you with. So just a quick background about MPAC, if you want to go to the next one, uh, what do we do? So just MPAC, our job is to assess and classify more than 5.5 million properties across Ontario. And those properties have a combined value of $3 trillion. In the past year, Ontario has grown by approximately 45,000 residential homes. And in 2022, we've added more than $37 billion to the Ontario assessment rolls. So for how that relates to municipalities, they use that to make informed decisions about their community, including the distribution of property taxes. <clears throat> so there's four key players in Ontario's property assessment and taxation system. We have the government, MPAC, municipalities and property owners. So the provincial government, specifically the Minister of Finance, is responsible for setting assessment and taxation legislation as well as policies. They also determine education tax rates and under this umbrella, the assessment review board also falls. So they are an independent body that adjudicates all of our assessment appeals uh, through MPAC <clears throat> and that also falls under the province of Ontario. So then secondly, we have MPAC. So MPAC is an independent, non-for-profit corporation, and we're funded by Ontario municipalities. Our role is to accurately assess and classify all properties in Ontario, and we do this in compliance with the Assessment Act, which is set by the Ontario government. Municipalities are the next one, which, as you know, determine the budget requirements, set tax rates, and collect property taxes to pay for municipal services, such as police, road, fire, recreation, water, among other things that are necessary for independently each municipality. And then finally, we have the property owners. So the property owners are the ones that pay the tax bills. They help set market value through ongoing property purchases and sales. So how do we maintain our database? And this is very important and it's ongoing work that we do throughout the year. It never stops. It doesn't matter whether it's a year of reassessment or um, just a regular everyday day to day. It's continuously updated so that your municipal records can be accurate for your tax decisions. And this includes for us, our property inspectors and our analysts out there inspecting and assessing uh, new construction additions and renovations we track school support data, we complete requests for reconsiderations and appeals, we respond to property owner inquiries and help them to understand their assessment and provide the education necessary so that they understand uh, how their property value works in regard to property value and taxation. And then in addition, we also support municipalities. Um, one of the ways is having access to Municipal Connect. And that's how we're, it's a platform where our municipal stakeholders can obtain assessment related information right at their fingertips um, daily. And then we also work collaboratively, collaboratively on projects that are important to you. So the most recent one would have been the digital building permit process, which is through cloud permit where owners can <clears throat> apply for their permits right online and everything is electronic back and forth. And it's just uh, a lot of time saving. So we also update uh, every single property assessment in Ontario based on legislative evaluation date. And so we call this property assessment update or a reassessment. So the valuation date for the most reassessment, current reassessment is January 1st, 2016. And this is when we determined every property in Ontario could have been reasonably sold in its current state and condition at a particular point in time. So provincial legislation determines when MPAC conducts each province-wide assessment and uh, updates and sets a valuation date for each cycle. So currently all values of properties right now are based on January 1st, 2016 and continue to will continue to be so until we hear an update from, uh, from the province. <clears throat> so when this happens, uh, this kind of slide goes over what ha happens. There's, so there's a valuation date, there's notices that are mailed, and then in the next four years, depending on when the valuation date, that if there's any increase, it's done um, 
by percentage. So 25% each year over the four years. So it's, it's called a phase in. Um, and if your property decreases, it would flat white on the first year. So there's valuation date, property assessment date notices are mailed. So property owners would get what we call a pan. And then in that pan, it explains to them their market increase between one base year, which would be January 1st, 2016, to X number, whatever evaluation date we're going to next. And the increase would be evaluated, <clears throat> would be increased 25% each year so that it's um, a less of a tax burden for homeowners and a little more stability for the municipalities. <clears throat> so <clears throat> in throughout pack, we have three approaches to value. We have direct comparison, income, and cost. So the direct comparison approach, which is the most common, and that's a, the sales approach to value. So we take recent sales of comparable properties and they're analyzed to provide an indication of value. So these types of properties would be condos, vacant land, and uh, residential properties. So there's five main factors that um, complete about 85% of that value. So the first one would be location, lot dimensions, exterior square footage, quality of construction, and the age of the property. And in addition, there, we have about, I'm not sure, like 200 variables that we will um, add accordingly. But those are the five main ones that make about, up about 85% of the value of, of a property. The next one is the income approach, and this is the ability to earn revenue. So it's the income, by the way, that the landlord can generate. Uh, rent through the ability to lease a space, not really the revenue being generated by the quote unquote Walmart or Home Depot, et cetera. So and through this, what we do is we send the property owners um, informate our property income expense reports, and then we analyze their monetaries through that, and that determines their overall value. So some of those would be industrial malls, dental buildings, office buildings, et cetera. And then finally, we have the cost approach. And the cost approach is used for properties that are typically unique and that they don't typically trade on the open market regularly. Uh, so it's a kind of a three-step process. Basically, first, we cost the building based on um, you know, building it from the ground up. Then we can apply any deductions for age or depreciation or obsolescence. And thirdly, apply a land value, which is done through the direct comparison approach. So you add all three of those together, which in turn determines what um, that value of that property is, is worth. So some of those would be industrial buildings, small retail, gravel pits, warehousing, et cetera. So those are some examples. So at MPAC, we have to have a trigger to basically to visit a property. So what um, draws our attention to property is typically one of the following things. So it could be a sale, a request from the municipality or a property owner, uh, a building permit, a request for reconsideration or an appeal. But big, biggest one would be uh, building permits because those are the most common. On, on an annual basis, we typically um, process about 300,000 building permits for uh, new development and renovations throughout the year. And we realize that our municipal partners rely on our assessments to levy property taxes and they budget, it helps with their budgeting to understand what their potential growth is going to be within the municipality. So we rely on our building inspectors to uh, provide us with the permits as quickly as possible. So then as soon as we can get them, then we can provide a, a more accurate assessment or growth forecast going forward. So next, as we assess properties uh, or change an assessment, we mail the property owner our property assessment, which kind of has, as I had said earlier. But sometimes the property owners don't necessarily agree with their assessed value. So if you get questioned or asked about any of this for both um, municipal staff and for counselors, the, the biggest number one question that we will ask property owners is to say, you know, as of January 1st, 2016, if you looked at your assessed value, could you have sold your property for that value? If that's, if they can agree with that, then typically they're fairly and accurately assessed. The next place that they should, you could redirect them to is we have an online website and it's called About My Property. 
And on there, they can go on to confirm all of their uh, assessment details. They can review sales in the area. They can um, complete their own comparable report, which is sales of similar properties in, the, in their necessarily neighborhood. And then at the end of that, if they still don't agree, that's the quickest and easiest way for them to request for reconsideration. They can do so right online. And then it's done and it comes right to us and we can action that accordingly. Um, once a request for reconsideration is submitted, there will be a person designated to that property and they will go visit the property um, and deal and work with the homeowners to see if they can uh, come up with a, a, an amicable um, solution. <clears throat> so additionally, we realize that there's a lot of unknowns about the next province-wide assessment update. So we've implemented a strategy to um, try to combat some of the misconceptions about the relationships between assessed value and taxation. So including some resources for both municipalities, homeowners, elected officials, et cetera. Um, and then you can find this at mpac.ca. And there's some good one-pagers. There's an excellent video that can be can be watched. Um, I'm not sure, Annette, if you want to play it or if you just want to share it with them to watch on their own time. Yeah, yeah, no, I'll share it around with uh, everybody who can watch it. It's in the uh... yeah. So it's it, this video is in, in this video. It's great. It's um, a very, very, very simple video that explains the difference between if there was a, um, a basically a town with three houses and how it would change depending on budget or depending on how the percent increases. I would suggest it's it's uh, <clears throat> it really, really helps the understanding for the difference between property taxation and property assessment and how the relationship works between it. So it would be a good watch for yourselves. And also if um, you get questioned by municipalities or by uh, homeowners, it would be a good resource for you to um, send them to. And that again is on mpac.ca and we also have it on our YouTube channel. <clears throat> so additionally, we have a, a newsletter that um, we send out every month and it's called In Touch. And it just gives a quick, it gives a updates on what MPAC's doing. We also have social media. So we're on Facebook, Twitter, and again, we have a YouTube channel where we have lots of our webinars and information um, there readily available. So please feel free to uh, check it out. And then here is some of our contact information. Um, um, thank you very much for having me here today. I hope I didn't take up too much of your time. I'm happy to take any questions. And as again, I'm looking forward to meeting you all in person and continue the relationship going forward. Thanks, Jennifer. Uh, Mayor Murphy actually has a question. Hi, Jennifer. So much Hi. for being with, with us today. Um, I suppose my problem or the challenge will be since these properties have been assessed in over seven years, um, and we know uh, in November of 2021, the average sale price in Bonnier Valley went up 38%. Okay. Now, even though you're going to phase it in over four years, whenever the province deems you ready to reassess, my problem is that um, I'm concerned that we're going to be pricing people out of their homes. Okay. Yeah, and I, I think that's a very common concern at this point in time. So when you watch that video, it will help kind of go through a little bit of any of the misconceptions. So um, I don't really want to a whole lot of taxation. I did watch the video. Okay, a whole lot of taxation. There's, there's still, um, and I don't believe it's a myth and it's not a misconception, um, the sad fact of the matter is, even if we dropped our our tax rate dramatically, I'm still afraid that these assessments after seven years and the housing boom during the pandemic is going to be tragic. Right. Yeah. So, like you said, we are legislated to look at the sales, um, whatever the valuation date becomes. Um, determined by the Minister of Finance. And once that valuation date is set, then we will analyze the sales of all of those type of homes around that time. 
and our, we are legislated to do so. And then we will give you the municipality the assessment base and in turn, based on our budget and whatnot, then they would set the tax rate. But that's how we are legislated to do so. Um, if typically, if you were the average type of home in 2016, and you're still the average type of home today, based on what the sales are saying, your taxes shouldn't, they should be fairly relative to what they were back then, based on what, unless the budget has dramatically increased. Any any other questions from my counselors? So Jennifer, the figure you derive is market value assessment. Is that correct? Yeah. So we call it, yeah, current value assessment. They call it a, a CVA. And that's based on, like I said, the sales of similar properties. So every time there's something, a property that's transacted in the market, we typically visit the property to determine what that property was state and condition uh, what was actually there, was the basement finished, et cetera, and how it transacted, what physically was there, and what that value was worth. So then we will go and make sure that that's, that's accurate. So if a ratepayer's home goes from $250,000 to $280,000 over the last three years, and he now has an assessment, uh, can he use that, since you base your assessments on, on current value, uh, Will he have any recourse to say, my value, I, I have to protest that because I can't afford the taxes. We've gone up uh, more than I can afford. What what can he do then? He can, you said on there, he can apply either online or eventually in person speak to an assessor. If the only change that's happened to his house is current value rising, uh, what does he have a leg to stand on in terms of protesting? So we do, yeah, the request for reconsideration is a, a, a free service that we offer. Um, any homeowner can certainly apply for that. And what would happen is an assessor would come out and review all the factual information to determine that that is accurate. And then next would determine what other properties that are similar to them are assessed at because it's supposed to be um, the assessment should be also fair and equitable between homeowners and neighbors uh, and similar properties. And if they determine that the assessment is equitable to um, like their neighbor that has three doors down that has a similar home, then they would give them a confirmed assessment. So it, it, it's, it's legislatively based on what the sales are indicating for those type of homes. But again, Jennifer, if you're using comps, and our average price, I, and I like where John was going, where Councillor Epps was going with this, our average price was going from 249 uh, to 349, sometimes as high as 476. And I, I can't imagine that the, the housing boom in Renfrew County wouldn't be any different than the housing boom across rural Ontario. So right. the county value in November of 2021, went up 29%. So we're going to be in this um, predicament with all of the municipalities in Renfrew County. And I and I am concerned that if you're using comps um, and, and, and cost, um, that our, as Councillor Epps said, our residents won't have a leg to stand on when they go to my property. Yeah, um, like, I don't know barely what to tell you besides that, except that that is legislatively what MPAC is bound to do. So we don't, we have to assess you as fair and equitable based on what those sales are and what um, the market is indicating. That's what legislation and the provincial government has dictated for us to do. All right, maybe a good subject to go to AMO with. Yeah, and it, it depends, like I said, like if the assessment base was X number of dollars and now it's this number of dollars, if the assessment base is increasing double, depends on what your tax rate is going to be to determine if you're going to, what those people are going, what kind of recourse those individuals are going to see. 
right? So those are things that you're going to have to work also with municipality about to understand and their municipal office about how that um, how that's going to trickle out. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, our CAO Annette uh, had a question as well. Thanks, Jennifer. I appreciate. It. I know it is provincial, and as the mayor was saying, maybe it is something we need to have a delegation to discuss about. It. But what I wanted to ask you was if, um, and if you can't answer this, that's fine. I'll, I'll talk about it offline. But when the reassessment does come down, uh, will I think we've talked about this before? Will impact be available to come into our office? You know, certain times. Uh, just to be yes. here for uh, because this is is going to be such a big change and what the impact will be we'll have to see what the impact will be but um, if impact will be available to come and let's say like the, our county planning staff comes and works at our office for a day you know yourself or Tracy could come and work here for a day in our council chambers and just sort of be available for appointments uh, for residents to come and see you is that something and if you can't answer me that's fine but I know we talked about it once before that that yeah. might be no, absolutely. I'm, I've offered this at every clerk treasurer's meeting that we would be willing to come to the office um, whenever that suits and whether it's just myself or whether I bring myself an evaluation person. Um, we have been going to other municipal offices already to date. They've reached out and asked and we've made it accordingly. Typically, we have gone kind of quarterly to some of these offices just and put and then municipalities have put it out to the ratepayers. And they've been able to come in and ask us questions and we've been able to help them, you know, kind of right on spot. So certainly we can definitely coordinate something that suits uh, everyone's schedule. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, perfect. Uh, was there anything else from council? No, but I, I am going to bring this just for council. I'm going to bring this as a priority to the Rama board. And I know that it's, it's not just a rural issue. Prices all over the province, the province wide, but it can be it can go up to AMO. But uh, yeah, Je I think we put that as a priority for AMO. So, uh, Jennifer, we just want to thank you on behalf of the Township of Volunteer Valley for uh, coming to your delegation today. I'm sure uh, Net yourself and our council will be in touch. Yeah, perfect. All right. Yeah, thank you very much for your time. It was nice to virtually meet all of you. I hope next time it'll be in person and uh, I'm more than happy to come visit the office. So Annette, please uh, reach out when it suits you guys to come and we can uh, make something suit accordingly. Perfect. Thank you very much, Jennifer. Okay. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye now. Thanks. Okay. Perfect. We'll move on to uh, Daryl's report. Daryl, thank you for joining us today. Back close to not. <laughs> yeah, I saw you walk through the door, so it must be all yeah. right news then. That's no, good. it's not all right. Yeah. Uh -oh. um, I have another water main break. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, um, not much going on other than reports and sampling and stuff, which is a normal January. Uh, right now, we're just getting our year-end reports done. We're having an inspection next Tuesday. Uh, very large inspection. And uh, today is a water break. You can't win with this weather. No. Nope. That's probably that's probably from the Friday, Saturday, and just coming out it now. It could be. Yeah. It's right on the side of the... the well, I know, I know most municipalities have been driving through. Whoever has water has at least one. Yeah. So. Well, the guy that usually comes and helps us there, he was in Kelly this morning. Right yeah. now, he's in Pembroke when he's done there. He's been coming. Yeah, they're just in Pembroke now because yeah. there was one in Pembroke on Saturday. Oh, they have them. Oh, all the time. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's brutal the amount that they've had this year. It's yeah. a steady, steady thing. So this is different than the hydrant problems we talked about last time. This is the actual horizontal yes pipes that's yep. got a leak somewhere. Yeah. And lo and behold, it's the same pipe as what's on John Street. Oh, Daryl. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Okay. So we have three sections. This is another one that, that I've never had a break on before. Hmm. So, Go back to we won't know until we get through the mud. Yeah. And we'll see what we've done. 
Any questions? Uh, then your inspection's just standard, is it not? That's your annual? Uh, yes, but this is a detail. Okay. How often are the detailed ones? Uh, every three years. Every three, okay. So is that it? Any other questions from council? No. Uh, Murph? And, and, and then when Darren was here, I thought we'd, we'd just go to the correspondence there, Linda Tracy's request for water from Marion Hill. Oh. And the, the man with the water is here. Uh, I, I think the logistics of it would be prohibited, but she has had a request and we supply water. And just a matter of interest, uh, <clears throat> I made an inquiry. What would Mary Machine do? Because my, my daughter's the head of administration there, and she said we get a lot of water, and we just call Culligan. Oh, there you go. But uh, but I can't. You know, Did how you are you going to transport that volume of water from here to Pembroke? I mean, that's that's not our problem. She just wants to know if she can if we, she can get water. Okay, she and she it, she has to transport it and. Uh, then you know she has to transport in a sterilized. Well, that's right. And there's only I think a couple of years ago we had a problem with people that wanted some water put in their wells and they find a sterilized yeah, tanker. We don't have any. We don't have it here. Uh, contractors around here don't have them. But it's no different than any other. If anyone wants water, they just they just bring their own. We supply it, and then yes. that's it, right? Yeah. It's no different than. I think she was more asking about the quantity. Yeah. yeah, could be. right. Yeah. That's what that's the way I read it. But to get the quantity of water from here, but it's not, not our problem. No. But to no. get the quantity from here to Pembroke, it's going to be logistically almost impossible. That's, but that's a, that's what the uh, well, if she's just doing the building, it's yeah, just the Marianne building. So like, yeah, they're only going to run a sense. How, how do they store they it up there or yeah. manage because it? Because she's, it she's expecting this response to her letter at the, to this council meeting. So. Yeah. I didn't have a problem with it. it no, like, I don't have a problem with it either, but I just it. thought I'd throw it out there. It's... And I thought I'd find it and say, well, what's somebody else doing? <laughs> well, I figured it was just pretty much standard across, like, I was surprised it came to us, I guess. But yeah, but usually... everybody's making up their contingency plans, right? 100%. Yeah, that probably well, that's what's going on. Yeah. In case there's a water main break. <laughs> 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 Sorry, too soon. <laughs> yeah. You know, they're, if their line breaks going into their building or something like that, and yeah. it's like sometimes these things take two or three days. Well, she can't do that water for two or three days. No. <clears throat> and she, she did just, and she did say that they would go to Pembroke. The what this is is a backup. If there's something wrong with the water in the Ottawa River, she wanted it on a different river system. If that was the issue, yeah. so I mean, the yeah. chances of it ever happening are are low, Remote. but that's not never. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I did have a conversation with Daryl beforehand to say, do we have any issues with that? No, you're right, Mer. We would not be involved in transporting it or doing anything like that. No. But if council says, uh, yeah, that's we're okay with that, and if Daryl says we're okay with that, then um, it's just basically a response back to her to say, like, if they ran into that big of an emergency, and if the Ottawa River really is. To the point they can't take water from Pembroke, then right. we would be a backup, a backup, backup. It'd be a lot more than her building looking for water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We've got a hospital too. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I don't see an issue as long as we get the, yeah. so everyone's good with it. Yeah. No. Okay. Just, uh, perfect. This direction that I can say, yeah, yeah. it's okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Thanks, Daryl. Have a good day. Hi, Daryl. Good luck. Okay. Bye bye. Take care. Do we have uh do we have Jason? I don't here? think he's here yet. I scheduled him for two fifteen. So you're very efficient today, Brent. No, I, I you know what on this uh, agenda I don't have the time, so that's a I, I know. Guess a, well, I can add it. Yeah, sure. that's one thing that's missing. I'm a time based mm -hmm. individual. Sure. Yeah, because you want to prove how efficient you are. No, nothing to that. Just on task and good to go. Okay, so I get, we'll just move on to uh, correspondence A then. Uh, so we did have, so anyone want to discuss anything from my uh, correspondence A? Usually it's just information. Everyone's good, perfect. Uh, so we'll move on to correspondence B. Uh, so anyone have any discussion for uh, number one, the Canadian Association for Marriage and Family Therapy? Uh, number two, we had a letter from Robert Osborne, the Maple Leaf Tax. And Mr. Osborne actually reached out to me also by phone um, I would, uh, can I action this for myself to speak to some of the other uh, municipalities? 
I think, um, number one, it's a budgetary issue, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so if it's something that we are considering, that's when it comes forward. I'd just like to know who else got this. Yeah, it's fine. We can bring just bring it forward to the next meeting, Annette, uh, yep. for the... No, the, um, the March March meeting, because I won't have an opportunity. Just, so just bring it to the next committee meeting. Thank you. Okay. If everyone's fine with that, everyone's yep. good. Perfect. Uh, so then we had uh, Mr. Environment, Township and Navarre side. Uh, Renford County, 55 plus senior games donation request. Uh, I don't remember if we ever donated no. uh, previously. I think we've always uh, said no. Not that I'm aware of. And we didn't give to the Winter Games, so I don't think that we should be no. changing that. Is there any in kind we could do, like we did with the Winter Games? I don't think we did. Oh, I thought we did in kind with the We had truck. availability for trucks. No. But, but yeah. they didn't call on us. No. Mm. Okay. But the thought was there. And it's the thought that counts. Okay. We did send a lot of volunteers from Montreal. Yes. I didn't realize there was senior games. Yeah. And, and next year, I guess I'm a senior. Now you'll be in. Oh, hey, a shopper's discount now and everything. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, super down over there. So, <laughs> so uh, for, for uh, uh, so then is everyone in agreement uh, for uh, no donation request? I, I don't know. I just wonder if there's something we can offer in kind. So it's we can reach out and find out. We did one thing. We did a couple of events here, I think, one year, and we did something in kind. I believe, but that would have been years ago. When is this taking place? Sorry, there's Jason. Great. Let's get through the course on. That's what my gap yeah. line is. I'm not sure when it is, but I'm just looking at the letter, let's see it in here. And sorry, what, what page number is that on the agenda? That is on the correspondence, correspondence uh, B number five. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Throughout Renfrew County. It's page 68. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Got it. It doesn't show a date. No, it doesn't. Maybe we could. Summer games. Uh, it's the summer games. Okay. But, uh, maybe, maybe, Annette, if you don't mind, just reach out and see what in kind they would they would do. We have a river. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we reach out and we'll talk about the next meeting then. Yeah. Uh, Mary and Hell, we already discussed that. Uh, we can we'll discuss no, Wayne Drillards with uh, when Jason's uh, up. Uh, the woman sexual assault uh, hanging the banner. I actually would like to discuss that when we talk about the mm -hmm. tourism strategy. Uh, just because I think they go uh, hand in hand, in my opinion. Um, mm -hmm. Then uh, the only other one on here uh, was just for the Renfrew County Veterinarian Services Committee. It was just uh, just saying that that was just they provide the information. Yeah. So it's kind of standard. Um, do you want to support repeal repeal Bill 23? I don't know. That's coming this uh, Will it do any good? Coming today to council. It was already pulled forward from the last meeting. Yeah, isn't that in our um, yeah. Yeah. agenda yeah. package? No, no, no. But do we want to make it a little stronger language since the last meeting a lot has gone on? I guess we don't. I don't know. What do you think? Well, I just keep it consistent. May not do any good, won't do any harm. I know. Okay, just leave it as it is. I just mm -hmm. a lot has gone on since our January meeting. Mm -hmm. um, even at Roma, Are you going to address some of that in your report. I am not. Um, I didn't do anything with Bill Twenty Three at the Roma conference. However, there were people walking around with stickers on with Twenty Three and the line through them. Like it's. I'll, it'll be interesting to see what what transpires. It's not going down well, especially rurally. Yeah. Well, it's it's like anything. If there's more uh, components of it that we want to discuss on a later date, there's nothing wrong with sending an additional and, letter, right? Yeah. So it's no different than what we've done in the past. But maybe that's maybe that's the next move, not just a resolution, but a letter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'll we, noodle on that. You can noodle on it, Jen. I will perfect. noodle on it. Uh, any other discussions for correspondence B? Okay, so we have two remaining items we'll discuss later. Correspondence C, there is none. Perfect. 
Uh, and we do have Jason with us. Jason, come on up. Hello, hello. Hello, Jason. My report is fairly short. <clears throat> um, January's been a very busy month for us, so we've been moving a lot of snow and trying to catch up with our snow banks and all that fine, good stuff. I would also like to bring to Council's attention about large tra truck traffic going up Bruce Street, uh, which is a big concern because the trucks don't realize how steep the hill is in the winter. <clears throat> And most of the time they get stuck. Yep. Um, so I think it's a big issue because if you look at Google, it reroutes you up Bruce Street. I was just asking. Well, I remember I, I left, I think that was about a month and a half ago. They were stuck at 4 a.m. and you guys were out there at like five mm -hmm. trying to be just stuck on the road. Yeah. Is there any, what can we do for that to get done? Um, my suggestion would be put a no truck route on it. Okay. So it still allows deliveries. <laughs> Um, you know, we can't stop deliveries, but any of this truck truck traffic that is going through, it should hopefully stop it. Have you spoken to your counterpart in North Algoma Country Force about this? I we thought we'd bring this forth first okay. and let council know what's going on and what, what steps we're going to take. And then uh, if, I, if I guess they want to use that one as a shortcut. Yes, Mervyn, it's only like two minutes short. It was probably even a kilometer. How uh, how many trucks have broken down on this year? <laughs> This year we've had at least four. Yeah. And we've had a lot to stop at the bottom. Yep. And just by chance, I was going along and <clears throat> I said to the guy, Are you planning on going up there? And he said, Yes. I said, Turn around the tourist booth and go down through the lights. Well, even in the summertime, you said the one engine block not to up in the summer, like trying to go over. It's, a, it's yeah. not just a winter engine. No, you blew the transmission out of the truck. Yeah. Turning up. It was freezing. Well, this was in the Whoa. in the late in the spring, mm -hmm. and he had a load of steel on. Go ahead and remember it. And uh, he turned the corner, and he was blocking Bruce and forty or uh, sixty. The only one there was only the one lane going through, and he's, he was stranded. Yeah. So the alternative going to the uh, the T in North Algoma, the grades are all much better there. Yes, that's the plan. It's the grade at the bottom at the granary that makes the problem. That's right. Okay. But we absolutely have to have North Algona sign on to this because we can't have somebody coming down Let Cemetery getting to Bruce and going, Oops. uh oh. Yes. And there's there's a lot more truck traffic on Let Cemetery and Bruce. Okay. <clears throat> because it was nicely paved last year. No, because of the rerouting on, on Google. Oh yes. Yeah. But it is really nicely paved. <laughs> Once you get so over, they call it the North Algona Speedway. <laughs> so then, so then on, so then on our, so then on our end, it would be uh, signage. Yes. And, and a bylaw. And bylaw. Yeah. So <clears throat> we 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 go to uh, council NAW council and introduce or, or talk to them about a proposal that suits both ends of it. Or and we if we do it from our end, as you say, it's not not very effective. No, but we'd have to get agreement with North Algona and then put signs out that cemetery that they could either go down the snow drift. Right. Oh, yes. And then uh, that makes that okay. Well, because the biggest thing is just that first hill. And that so, if I may, we did a, a similar bylaw at Adam for Bromley on Obiongo Road. And so we don't allow truck traffic on Obiongo Road in Adam for Bromley. But then when you get to the town of Renfrew, we did request Renfrew to do the exact same thing. Renfrew said no. We still passed the bylaw. We still put up the signs. And yes, it took a few months of, you know, MTO is the one who enforces it. And so they have their inspectors on the road. And of course, once someone is on the road, there's nowhere for that truck to go. So, you know, it's not like they were they were fined or anything. What would happen is the MTO would stop them and say, you're not permitted on this road off Highway 132. And, um, you know, in the future, you're going to have to go another route. And so after a couple of months of letting the drive, the regular drivers know, now, of course, as Jason said, you know, if it's a truck delivering there or if it, if it has to come there, then that's fine. Um, and so over time, they stopped going down there. So regardless of if we, we will reach out to Norm, if committee and council agrees with the direction, then we would prepare a bylaw for the next meeting for our portion, and we would absolutely reach out to North Algona. Hopefully they would agree, and the whole road would be the same. If the whole road cannot be the same, we can still pass it on our portion. 
it just makes it a little bit more difficult for NTO to enforce because mm -hmm. as they start to come down there, yeah, I'll, there's not a whole lot that they can do to to turn around. So, but over time, they they you know yeah, it's similar. I think it's Cedar it's Hedge, Cedar Hedge out so. towards Latchford Bridge has that on their one yeah. huge hill. Yeah, just because the trucks getting backstopped on that. Yeah, so that's right. Attempt. That's a scary road. I, I don't. Um, I can't even imagine driving a transport truck on Obiongo and like coming out of Renfrew. Yeah. yeah. Um, what's the where is the the where is that AB end and Renfrew start? Is that around like David Ainsworth's farm there? Yes. Okay. Yes. So a very similar situation, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Not yeah. AB didn't have a lot of it. Renfrew had the majority. And we have the steep part. And we have the steep part. Yeah. Renfrew has the scary corner. Part. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so if so, if direction is received to go ahead with the bylaw, so you pass the bylaw for the whole township, and you basically say we are going to do no truck routes. They will be signed, and then Jason would come forward to say, "Here's the so you know which road he wants to sign," uh, and he would post that sign up, and then uh, we would reach out to North Ogunna Wilbur Forest. If they agree, they'd have to pass their own bylaw, do their own signage. If they don't agree, um, then it would just be on our portion. Okay. If that's the direction of the percent, right? in our portion, and our portion is the one we're having issues with. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if they don't agree, I wonder if they would agree um, with a sign at Snowdrift. At Snowdrift or send them across. Say, yeah. Saying not the whole no, no truck track. I know that they still own from okay. Snowdrifters to the water tower or whatever. But I'm just thinking, would they acquiesce to that if we asked them to yeah. post at Snowdrifters? So we can ask. Yeah. Okay. So if we, you say we pass a bylaw saying there will be some restrictions, is that basically mm -hmm. yeah, it? And right. then we negotiate on the locations. Yeah, that's it, right. It's good because NAW shares three very important process, uh, approaches to mm -hmm. to uh, our our community. And so it's, uh, it will open the door for friendly discussion. And and they may come back to us and they may have requests for certain roads on their side of things yes. too. Yeah, so, so then... Uh, just for clarity, Jason, what size a truck would it entail? <clears throat> Anything over 11,000 kilograms. Yeah. So if that's a 10 ton tandem axle? Correct. Okay. okay. Now that doesn't affect municipalities or fire or yeah. milk trucks right. or anything yeah. like that, right? It's. But yeah, John's sure. learning the crazy boundaries of our municipalities. <laughs> you're <laughs> the practical practical practical. And so you're talking tractor trailer. Yeah. yeah. And we can issue a permit. Trains. If we want to waive it for a specific purpose, if I don't know, if someone's doing forestry or something on a specific road that we normally have it on, but in this one instance we're going to allow it through, Jason can issue that permit. Like if, if it's in the winter time, <clears throat> say on a different road, say it's whatever road, right? If they uh, they were going to do some log, like Annette said, we can write the um, an agreement, right, that they only go from this time to this time. Okay. <clears throat> now, what do you do about their GPS though? <laughs> I don't know what we can do with that. I mean, you can you can let Google know that there's no truck traffic, but I doubt these truck drivers are all using Google. Yeah. They you probably Google have their own GPS. Yes. It, it could be a bunch of variety of different. Yeah, well, they will drive it once and then realize <laughs> exactly. And I, I, I'm thinking the word is kind of got out because. Well, I've seen, I've already seen, I think, at least, well, I've seen probably three, probably in the last, within the last year myself. Well, last year was really bad. There was six. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's not ideal. Okay. And the one gentleman, he got halfway up just down the granary, got to the top, slid yeah. down, and went against the hydro pole, yeah. which is very dangerous. Right. It could have went into the house. Managed to right. block six lanes of traffic. Just go on. <laughs> so, so it sounds like we're, we have a kind of a, it'll come to the next meeting. We'll just, we can uh, talk a little more then. Um, and then Jason, then your second point on that, uh, which, was on the, which was the other road? Spring Creek. Spring Creek, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so the other road I have concerns with. <clears throat> now. Yeah. <laughs> I think once we pass the bylaw, though, we should have Jason ask Dana to at least alert Google because there will be some that use Google. Oh, for sure. Right? I feel I feel like we actually 
Oh, we could reach out to school five one one. Yeah, I thought I thought we reached out to Google like four years ago on that this issue. Yeah, they don't always. Yeah, they take the information. But is that the one where they were going up Wentland Road looking for a shortcut? That too. That one <laughs> was what a disaster. A couple of years ago, I mean, I don't do the GPS, yeah. but GPS was given daughters directions to get the member from here up about your street. Yes. <laughs> there's no road right no there's no oh, you can't get there from here you can't get there from there no <laughs> so jason go ahead at least spring at creek is all on spring yeah. creek yes yes yeah so Half roads will be coming on though <laughs> yeah so we've been having a lot of troubles with with hydro sawmill because all the trucks coming down 41 will cut up spring creek as a shortcut of course and they're just beating the crap out of that road it's so <clears throat> and they're not listening to the half loads and I called MTO, and it just doesn't seem to be working. So my suggestion is to put a truck right on there also. <clears throat> now, the uh, Howards have a milk dairy farm, so we can't stop that. And Chase Construction have a quarry on the road. Right. And I've contacted them, and they have no problem, because they only use that road during the summer. No times during any times that the top loads in and done. That's a shame because it is a good shortcut. It is, <laughs> but the, the road, it will preserve the road till we can get to do the construction on that road. I think, is that your recommendation? <laughs> yes. All right. And the truck slow logs are a problem any season. That's right. Come sit on my front porch sometime, John. I'd like to have tea at your front porch. When There's a, uh, we, uh, you supply the beer? I'll the beer. So then the the re the reroute for that then would be up shell to sand like to Foy Mountain yeah. and then carry on all the way down Pike Wall. Yes. Stay on County Road. Oh yeah. So this too would fit under if we have that bylaw we're talking. We can we can then designate which roads are important. Yeah. And sorry, one obvious question is Foy Mountain doesn't Hill doesn't give us that problem. That's County Road. <laughs> ah, okay, that's even better. Yeah. <laughs> right, you know me. <laughs> Good report. So then I guess that the next time the next time we look at that road, so if we keep it uh, so no trucks on it, then we wouldn't have we wouldn't upgrade to the high like to commercial grade some at Augsburg. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well that's hmm. although I know the pricing's not too, not so different anymore, but I think it's there's still a savings there. Yes. Okay, and we have to ask uh, Jason about this. Um, yeah, road allowance. Road allowance. Thing. And, uh, Were you given that request, Jason? Yeah, it's just for uh, Wayne yeah. Drewler's request for the closure and purchase of the road allowance. Okay. Were you able to review it? I did not. Oh, okay. <clears throat> the one at point out at the back? Oh, sorry. Yes. Sorry. Yeah, I did review that. <clears throat> yes, I did. I don't have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. being closed. Sounds good. Made sense to be honest. We just look at it on the map. Yes, exactly. It's, um, it's not going to be going anywhere, and you, know, you can't really shut up. I was going to say it's the road to nowhere as well. Yeah, it just exactly. seems, yeah, it seems pretty cut and dry. Minutes. We have three minutes. <laughs> three minutes there now. We're interested in their pieces. Yep. So they have till February 10th to respond. So, yeah, as long as we reach out to all the property owners, yeah. their standard procedure. Yeah. So, the process is similar to when we buy our waterfront allowance out at the cottage. Yeah. So, they have to get the basically no, no contest from their neighbors. And on we go. But this will, this will spark sort of a domino effect. But so far, we only have three. Oh. Interested in everybody else, not interested. Interesting, Merv. Yeah, you, you had a comment. No, oh, okay. Yeah, so <clears throat> like it's, it's you can't really landlock anyone, right? Yeah, no. so yes, great. Any other uh, questions from council? Okay, sounds good. We'll have a good day, Jason. Perfect, thank you. How bad are the roads right now? Uh, there's only about an inch or so long. Okay. And that, and that that hailstorm and ice storm didn't or the it didn't didn't, didn't come out yet, but okay, it's still in the forecast. Oh, thanks, Jay. <laughs> thanks so much. Take care. Bye. Uh, and then the fire chief is via Zoom.
Yeah. Great time for bio break. What time was he scheduled for? 2.30? 15, so something maybe has come up. It's unusual for him. All right, well, just uh, we'll take a five minute break and then we'll get. Jason was on at 2.15. Yeah, Jason okay. was 2.30. Sorry, he's 2.30 then. So yes, we have Okay, minutes. so we'll just take a five-minute break in it. Okay.
So much appreciated. You're lucky we're on camera. <laughs> we're able to track down the fire chief there. And you can there, yeah. Perfect. Sport mode deactivated. He is there. Um, he's having difficulty connecting. Can you hear me? Good. Yeah, Dave. Yeah, yeah, we can. Uh, we can hear you. You can hear us. I can hear you now. Yep. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Go ahead, there, Dave. Okay. So, um, thankfully, we had a relatively slow January. Um, as you can see by the report, we uh, things stayed under control, and I'm glad they actually did during these last few days as well. Um, typically, when you have a mild winter and all of a sudden you have a cold snap like that, that's when we run into issues with people having chimney fires and whatnot. Um, but that seemed to uh, that seemed to work itself. We seemed to work our way through that without any major issues, which was good. Uh, currently, right now, we, today and yesterday, we are in the middle of doing uh, SCBA fit and flow testing. I'm not sure if the guy stole the technician stole there, if you've seen any uh, commotion around the fire hall, but um, we were able to get that done a little bit early this year. So uh, that will be taken care of by, it will be wrapped up by the end of today, the day today, uh, end of the day today. So, um, which is good to get to get that done. Um, the thing for us going into March uh, will be um, the Northeast Eastern Fire Conference. So this has been canceled for numerous years because of the COVID pandemic. And I think the, I really appreciate the, the planning that went into the, the uh, attendance. So you could pay a little bit extra for an attendant uh, to go and do an NFPA course. So the one that they, they offered this year, and I think in light of the certification uh, and the concerns around that, especially in, in more rural settings, and so this conference is in a rural setting, um, is the instructor course. So we have three people that are enrolled in that, uh, and which will really bump our numbers uh, for certified instructors, which who will be able to teach moving forward once they've once they've graduated from that, uh, and it all count towards our our certification uh, moving forward. So. I'm happy that that was offered and we jumped on that right away. I uh, were able to get three people enrolled, so um, which was good. I have another person that is, uh, that's going, the fourth person that's going is already an instructor and they're there to take some leadership courses uh, through the OFM. So uh, I think all in all, it'll be a very uh, uh, worthwhile venture this year and not just the seminars and, and, and trade show and whatnot, which is usually normal for this kind of thing. So I think uh, it's money well invested in the training uh, side of our uh, our department. But apart from that, I don't. Uh, I, like I said it's been fairly quiet the last month, and uh, we're just uh, catching up on booking for all of our certificate, all of our certifications, and our and our uh, our normal year to year stuff that we have to do to try and get them done early and get them out of the way, so we don't have to worry about them for the rest of the year. Makes sense. Was there any uh, questions from council? All I have. Um, I have a random question. For yes, uh, Tracy, go ahead. Um, Dave, do we does the fire department carry Naxalone? Not not I'm saying it wrong. Naxalone within the trucks. Naxalone? No, we don't. Yeah, we don't. No, and I think this is this this has has come up over with previous councils. And um, one of the one of the factors, one of the reasons we really don't carry a lot of, we carry first aid stuff, obviously, and oxygen, and we're trained to use that stuff. Anything over and above that, we're bait, we're in, we, we share a base with the paramedic with the paramedic service. So, ninety nine percent of the time, they beat us to call, uh, whether it be um, you know an accident or we don't do first response medical. Uh, and if there's if, if there's a call that a medical is required, generally the paramedics are there before us. That's not saying they will always be there before us, but generally they have been. Historically, they have been. I was just curious, given the number of our, our opioid, opioid use is an epidemic, right? So, and we see more and more of that mm -hmm. in the news. Yep. And especially with yep. relating to youth and that, you know, things like fentanyl being within drugs that they're not even aware that it's in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I personally know yep. teenagers who've died from that. So yep. it's, it's a scary idea. Absolutely. And it would certainly be something I'm sure that um, if that was a, a you know, 
a desire of council for us to do that, then I I can only assume we'd have the appropriate training from the medics that we we work with, right? That could I'm, I'm sure that could yeah. be arranged. I think it's, I think it's something that it, it, it does well, John. You could be no more than most of us here that can save a life at a moment that that otherwise you you can't help the person, right? Unless you have something like that on hand. Absolutely. Well, if everybody's in agreement, uh, we can certainly uh, get some cost of kits together and ask the paramedic service if they would do some training. I. Personally, I think it's it, it's very important now. Previous years, we we left it to the devices of the of the paramedic service, but I completely agree that the epidemic has grown exponentially over the last over the pandemic. It's global, yeah, it's not just local anymore. Yeah. It's everywhere. Yeah. yeah. So could we could we ask the paramedic uh, team to give us uh, their assessment? How often does a firefighting unit arrive at a at a portion where you might need naloxone uh, well before the uh, the paramedic team. Uh, they might I, not have that I, on hand, John. Okay. Yeah. I would, I would just say, just keep it simple if that's a wish of counsel. So yes, you have your fire department. Uh, I'd say you have an availability there. and then But you also have the, these are kits. I'm pretty sure you can actually get them free, if I remember. Yeah. And yeah. You yeah. used to be able to. Yeah, I wasn't sure. sure if that was still the case. But I think that's more just looking at our community resources and just yeah. point people in the right direction or having availability like anything, right? But it's not helping in the time of. That's the problem. It's where you have first responders who, if they have it on hand, can make a difference in some no, but, but that's why I'm saying is that you make it so more people carry it. Like, for example, like I, I, a lot of people I know that go college and camping, anything like that, like be it in most areas that you generally have in their first aid, you know, who you're going to see camping. I don't right? know if there's the awareness yet on exactly what it is that you get to that point. Like that seems like something down the road that you can count on citizens to have that at hand. Or that an adult would do, but not necessarily a teenager. No, going on a they wouldn't know. Trip. Yeah, no. There, there's if someone's not breathing, which is the what you're, the scenario you're looking at, there yeah. there would be never any harm in giving the long term. It's like mm -hmm. when a diabetic is is um, having slurred speech, you give them a sweet. Uh, there's no harm in it. So um, that still means that we'd still have to help our firefighting team know how to give it properly and and have it in their in their box, and uh, maybe they'd never have to use it, but it it could do no harm to have it there. Agreed. <clears throat> yeah, I think mean, we'll bring it back in budget terms. And and the chief's right. I mean, we've got paramedics right here in our base, mm -hmm. so to train wouldn't be onerous on on their yeah. on their service. Yeah. Yeah. Just seems to be more and more cases of fentanyl use that uh, this, with the younger generation. The staff coming right. out of our paramedics yeah. service are staggering. Well, we can discuss at the next meeting if we want to draft draft a letter or start working as a priority. If we're talking about teenage like teenagers mm -hmm. and drug use, then maybe we should be writing letters to the province with, about local or local communities and the issues we're having within it. So, if people want to draft yeah, that, good. that's fine yeah. because having the kids is great, but it's, we want to get the prevention side of it. So it's proactive having stuff in our community that. Is going to prevent kids from you know, going that direction as well. Well, I would like to assume that our high schools do that, but do they? You're the only one with teenagers. Yeah, I, it begins at home <laughs> with me anyway. Okay. So I'm very adamant about this. Um, it is a concern, and if it's something that's simple as to providing it within our fire department and having it on hand, it, that does make a difference because fentanyl kills, right? Like it's not yeah. a simple let me call somebody to figure this out. It's but that's, but that's where I was going to the point and also within within parents, like, yes, mm -hmm. fire departments that has it, but within parents, they'd be like, hey, here is the resource that you, here is where you can actually True. grab it, right? The more you have it in the community, it's a, oh, as okay. John Multiple said, it's a, it's a, it's a shot mm -hmm. you have, be it a neighbor has or anyone, then you never know when a crisis is going to happen, but you want to be prepared for it, right? No different with a sight injury or anything. You never know when something's going to happen, but you want to be ready for it. Just uh, things like that take longer for adoption, right? For citizens to get it, know what to do with it. I you agree. Need training. But also, what John just said is absolutely correct. There's, You're not going to hurt somebody by giving them a dose up the nose, yeah. right? But you could save somebody's life. Yeah. And the other advantage of having it in the hands of our firefighters, as well as our paramedics is, 
the medication, which can be stale dated after a while, Absolutely. would be would be on a circle to keep it up to date. Right. Whereas that uh, in someone's home first aid kit, that might not be the case. But I, I can't see a downside to uh, mm. to investigating having the firefighters have it. Nor are your kids. I mean, it's <laughs> things like where they're out at parties and they're consuming and smoking things that they may not know that there's fentanyl in there. <clears throat> Right, so it's not like like but even it's going to happen at home <laughs> that yes. you could administer it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anything else for the fire chief then? Just one comment: when you when you say no one on leave, that means no one on leave for injury purposes, or or personal reasons. Well, congratulations yeah. for those zeros. <laughs> Thank you. I just want to make sure everyone knew what SCBA was. Oh, okay. Dave, uh, any uh, more comments or uh, you're good? Uh, no, no, not at this time, no. Perfect. Well, have yourself a great day, Dave. Thank you very much. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's all correspondence. For, that's all for reports for the day. We're all done correspondence. Uh, so we'll move on to new and unfinished business. Uh, so that is the mayor's report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Since my last report, I attended 30, 36 meetings and several events. Some of the highlights are as follows. The Eastern Ontario Regional Network and Rogers are looking forward to moving forward with some new builds in our area this spring. Uh, the weather has not been our friend. However, other delays seem to have been rectified, which is great news. The Ontario Winter Games opening ceremonies held on Thursday, February 4th were amazing despite the terrible weather. No amount of snow or wind could keep the athletes from showing their excitement to be back to this event. As noted, the games were postponed from 2022 to this year. A very special thank you to our own Melissa Bishop for attending and speaking at the ceremonies. The games continued this coming weekend with another opening ceremony on Thursday, February 9th from 6.30 to 8.30. The Egan Area Community Development Group is looking forward to a few projects this year. Once these projects have been ratified by the whole committee, I'll have more to report. I'm going to leave the update from the Bonashir Valley Youth Action Committee to Chair Tracy Sanderson. Uh, our rural and remote mental health and addiction, I, I wrote addition, uh, Sandra, so you might want to just add a C there. Addiction Initiative uh, is going to roll, uh, roll this committee back into our Bonashir Valley Health Committee, which is chaired by Carol Devine. We are looking at partnerships with our Ontario health team. We are gearing up for budget at the county, much like our own budget this year is going to be very difficult with trying to balance service delivery with the reality of our household budgets. Annette and I attended the Rural Ontario Municipal Association Conference in Toronto from January 21st to January 24th. On January 21st, I had a reception with the delegates running for the Roma board. It was an opportunity to speak to the issues in each zone, which seemed to be very similar across the province. Uh, during registration on January 22nd, myself, Annette, and many Renfrew County delegates campaigned for my election to sit on the Roma board. They were handing out rack cards with my information and the mints. See, makes more sense now that you have the mints, right? Yeah. Uh, it was an opportunity. Um, sorry. Uh, I have provided each of you with a tin of mints. On January 22nd, each Roma zone was given the opportunity to speak to their delegate. Zone 6 had four candidates, of which I was one. These speeches were very well attended. On January 22nd, Annette and I were part of a panel to speak about asset management. The panel consisted of Councillor Maggie Horsfold and Chief Financial Officer Margaret Carpenko from the City of North Bay, Mayor Cheryl Gannon and Director of Finance Donna DeFilippis from the Township of West Lincoln, and myself and CAO Annette Gilchrist representing Bonnershire Valley. North Bay has a population of approximately 52,200. They cover 315 square kilometers and have 833 kilometers of roads. West Lincoln has a population of 14,500. They cover 387 square kilometers and main five, maintain 527 kilometers of roads. Bonashir Valley has a population of 3,700. We cover 593 square kilometers and maintain 512 kilometers of roads. I've provided these stats to show the diverse nature of the three municipalities chosen for this panel, not only in population, but in the road networks that are maintained, which is our biggest challenge in our asset management plan. 
Annette and I heard from many of the attendees that it was a fantastic session and our response from Roma was also very positive. They sent out a survey and um, we got some really nice comments. On January 23rd, in addition to hearing from the Premier, the Chair of Roma and many other speakers, Annette and I attended a delegation with Minister of Transportation, the Honorable Caroline Mulrooney, to discuss her Connecting the East Transportation Plan, which is centered around electronic vehicle charging stations and inclusive and public transportation. Both of these initiatives would benefit our tourism and local economy. We also spoke to the need for more wayfinding signage. The results for the Roma Board elections were announced on January 23rd. I was honored to be elected as the representative for Zone 6. Everyone who attended from our county was extremely helpful in my election. Roma is the voice of rural Ontario, and I intend to use my voice to further any and all advocacy that the board chooses as their priorities. My first board meeting is on February 17th, so I will have more information next month. Due to my election to the board, I had to give up at least one committee. It was with some sadness that I attended my last meeting of the Eastern Ontario Leadership Council on February 2nd. At the Minister's Forum, otherwise known as the Bear Pit, <laughs> yeah. I was able to ask the question of Attorney General Doug Downey about the backlog of Provincial Offense Act cases and the shortages of justices of the peace. Um, I didn't put this in my report, but I, I assure you, I uh, ran into the Minister at lunch and I I gave him the heads up that I was going to ask this question. I tend to do that if I see the Minister that I want to ask the question of. My question was, good afternoon, ministers. I'm Jennifer Murphy, blah, blah, blah. My question is for the Attorney General, Doug Downey. Hello, sir. As there is a serious backlog of Provincial Offense Act cases and also a shortage of, a shortage of justices of the peace across Ontario, with more expected to retire in the near future, and the fact that many new, newly appointed JPs still require a full year of training, does your ministry have any plans to leave the portal on the AG website open to allow for a constant flow of applicants to choose from to ensure that we do not see these shortages coming in the coming years. And his answer was that he completely agreed with me and that either the portal should be left open for potential candidates or that there should be an explanation as to why the portal wasn't open and when the portal will be open for new potential candidates. On January 24th, Annette and I had a delegation with the Solicitor General, Michael Kersner, regarding firefighter certification. In attendance was Ontario Fire Marshal John Pegg, although they acknowledged that the grant uh, of $973.50 was probably not sufficient for a municipality. They are holding their ground and keeping the certification in place. This may prove difficult in the future for recruitment and retention in our fire department. Uh, fire Marshal Pegg did give me his business card to give to our chief, um, and they will be in touch. Um, and as we all know, this is this is going to be a problem down the road. After this delegation, the new Roma board was introduced on the main stage to all of the members that attended the conference. On January 25th, I attended County Council. Attached to this report are the highlights from that meeting, which you can all send out. You can click on it. Uh, of note, 35 properties have been acquired on 512, or portion of their properties acquired on County Road 512 for the rehabilitation of that highway mm -hmm. this year. On February 5th, I attended the Bonashir Cup opening ceremonies to bring greetings on behalf of Bonashir Valley. This event was extremely well attended. Since we have completed our orientation and have attended a few council meetings, I'm looking forward to any and all ideas for this year. If we work together and incorporate ideas from our ad hoc committees and our tourism strategy, I believe that we can make this a great term for our residents, businesses, and tourists. So let's hear your ideas. And I think that um, maybe next council meeting, if we don't have too much on the docket, maybe we do a little round table in new and unfinished. Uh, before I sign off, I want to send our condolences to the family, friends, and colleagues of Lisa Sharp, who passed tragically on January 25th. This concludes my address. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Murphy. Any questions for Mayor Murphy? Did you get all that? There's going to be a quiz later on. <laughs> the mints. The mints. I know. Keeping it fresh. 
<laughs> so Annette, can we just add that for new unfinished business at the next meeting, just uh, for ideas of, and uh, yeah. 2023 initiative? Yeah, things that you campaigned on, things that you want to pull out of the tourism strategy that you'd like to work on specifically. Um, I think, you know, in post-pandemic recovery, we have an opportunity to do so much, right? Obviously, we don't want to do everything in 2023, but I think that we really need to get active and get out there again. Perfect. Everyone's good? Perfect. Thanks, uh, Mayor Murphy. I'll email this out right now. Uh, for Google update, I'm going to actually start uh, after this meeting, the uh, committee's done, I'm going to actually start reporting and uh, when Murph chairs in the in the next like oh, in the next bank yeah yeah just a new and fish bit just how our meetings are lining up this year is just uh makes more sense uh but i did share the year interview with everyone just for uh last year's statistics the last three years mm -hmm. we've actually been providing it was in the uh, leader last week um but it's pretty much visitors library there's 13,184 visitors uh there's 395 programs offered uh 2,359 program attendance. Uh, there's 3,320 uses of the public access computers, and those are all being replaced this year because we we're successful in receiving the grant. Uh, so there's a lot of good things coming. Uh, there's 5,396 reference questions answered, uh, 2,042 different Wi Fi users, uh, 16,963 website visits, 783 Facebook followers, uh, 5,925 ebooks checked out. Uh, 1,170 materials added to uh, the collection. Uh, this is comparison of a $25,000 and $752 of new material brought in, uh, which is a huge uh, amount. Uh, 5,925 ebooks checked out, 166 new car users, and we expect to continue to rise. And that's why uh, one of the initiatives we just updated uh, the brochure. Uh, so that goes out with any uh, real estate agent. Uh, so when a new house is sold and they get a uh, what part of that welcome package that the real estate agents uh, provide. Uh, so we just update that and that's out again. And um, pretty much there was 22,352 times items were checked out. Uh, so that's just something that uh, the board put together about three years ago. And uh, it's just a really good, easy one for everyone to digest, see. Uh, and uh, that's pretty much it. Any other questions? Uh, just one. Um, I understand that the library is our warming center. Could we make that possibly more, just putting it out there more if it's on social media or in our newsletter or, I had a uh, question, obviously, over the weekend I had questions about warming centers. Yeah, I had that question about a month ago as well and stuff and I clarified the resident, but yeah, what I can yeah, do it, is we, sh we should actually uh, put that, I guess, in a new, like a future newsletter yeah. or time it so it's more specific so to next year. next year, yeah. yeah. Just yeah. that it takes a village site is 2,000 followers, probably a good place yeah. too to put it. Yeah, and then maybe we'll just space it so then going into next winter, a newsletter that we can actually uh, put it in. It. No, that makes yeah. sense. Um, and the board also, like we actually meet next Tuesday, so I can bring it up and just kind of uh, get them to put it out. There. And I think the most important note is when the library is open, mm -hmm. it's the warming center. Yeah, not yeah, yes. that's yeah. yeah. I don't want people showing up there at 10 o'clock at night. In the library. Right, but yeah, being frozen. And that is everything I have for the Drupal update. Uh, so the next uh, one is 8.3. So that's the tourism strategy. So we all uh, were privy to uh, the last meeting. And then so we can discuss the three-year strategic uh, tourism plan. I love how this is laid out. Mm -hmm. And to do establish in 2023 makes so much sense. Like let's let's figure it out and then and we can do, I mean, it doesn't mean that we can't enhance or, or you know, but I think that it's it gives us a really good path. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Just say it's gonna take further discussion and planning and resources. But Absolutely. Like a, a body, another body to well. Uh, and it's this is also budgetary. Yeah. So right? one of the comments I actually had on it uh, was just that. So obviously, uh, be more towards uh, the CAO's direction and then reassessing kind of uh, staff roles and what actually yeah. required to implement it. The only the only component of it, I guess, I know they said in year one to establish 
or work towards establishing like the mat tax. Yeah. And I'm I, I just clarify that I am opposed to that and I don't agree with it. It makes we don't really have anything in the area. It just never has made sense to me. It just it needs a strategic plan <laughs> to build upon his initial framework and concepts, right? It, so that's that's it's a, very it's a whole planning session involved in this. Hundred percent. But I like that we're not technically supposed to be overwhelmed in the first year. That's mm -hmm. why I like how it was set out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't want development charges. I get it. No, it's not development charges. It's the the mat tax, the mat right? Tax. So vacation but tax, and we don't really. We also talk about development charges <laughs> in when in one of our sessions. Oh, and part of it, yeah, yeah. But that's across the board. They always say stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but no, actually, what I was going to say, uh, and that's what I said, is like, well, obviously, I have further discussions, give me budgetary and stuff. But I think it's at least staff roles. And really coming out of the gate this year. So really it'd be just kind of, and then it kind of depends on, so like what's her intentions with uh, hang. And that's why I want to discuss the woman's uh, request for putting the banner up in May was what's her intention to put up the Discovery Eganville sign or Thanks. the yeah. signage for that throughout the whole year and really make it about promoting tourism. Is that That's what our focus, I think we think we need to open up or serve community and kind of mm -hmm. really being in, this has to be a council led initiative. Like I think hundred percent, like I think that yeah. first year, like we established mm -hmm. it and that we're, we're the ones kind of boots on the ground. They're really trying to lead this, make sure that uh, we're declaring like obviously our natural tourism week and continue that into the month and carrying on supporting our farmers markets. And I did like how they went through some things, but. But we also have to open up our CIP and see how we can enhance that. I think that's really important. Yeah, so. I just want to um, highlight something that Richard said many times through our sessions on the plan that it's yes, council is a leader, but this is not, it can't be a council plan. It can't be, it can't go from the top down, right? It has to be um, the community that, that comes with. Now, we're obviously going to provide the support to make mm -hmm. it happen, but it has to come from the community to us to say, Here's how we here's how we need your support for this because otherwise it, it if we're pushing programs down it doesn't yeah. uh, in his experience that doesn't work. Well, so and I but <laughs> isn't that part of the establishment? I don't I can bring it up, but that's part of the establishment. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Is that, yeah. It's got to be yeah. grassroots. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The challenges I've seen and even with the committee that I'm chairing is volunteer burnout. So when you're looking at things like this, like it, that's why I'm saying that it's really critical to have a strong plan. And, you know, you, he's defined sort of the audience, the target groups that you're going after, but build through those. Maybe you, you can't hit them all this year, but what is what is a low hanging fruit, right? right. You can excerpt the signage in town, whatever it may be. But yeah, it's, it's the volunteer component, I think. So Brent, though, um, there was the request for the banner. Yeah. And Okay, we figured out the tourism week is actually the last week in April. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if we hung Discover Eganville, and I want everyone to know there is a cost associated because we have to rent the boom truck. Well, we have to rent the boom operator and the boom truck. So the question is, do we put up Discover Eganville, take it down for a week in May during their the survivor walk, then take it down and put Discover Eganville back up. What about the... I don't think, I don't think we should... Sorry, sorry I was going to say flag banners. There's those two, right? Yes. Can't we use those for the... Leave, leave Discover Eganville and use utilize the flag banners for other signage? And this is sort of... Yeah, or do we, do we utilize either side of the bridge? But then are you going to be looking at... You know what I mean? <clears throat> so if they... You're saying if they want to put up flags. Yeah. Well, you can also use that for banners versus flags, right? But you can still yeah, get the message across. But you, there's, I think there's 18 of those. And they're throughout the mm -hmm. I estimated this, but we raised another couple. Yeah, I, I, but so here's the question. If we, because the, the banners that go over the bridge are like they're made, right? Like the groups that use them, the Art and Festival, the um, Women's Assault Center, those banners are made. They come up and down every year. Yeah. Um. But I don't know if we have the Discovery Eganville banner made yet. Yeah. If, if the big banner is made. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh. Because I know you know we've got a bunch of banners. So when we hire the boom truck, we try to get as much done as at the same time as possible. So we've got the little um the little banners that are on the the, the street, post, banners. Yeah. The street banners. Yeah. 
um, I was thinking maybe they could be Discover Eganville uh, if we got new, new, those display banners, because I know those banners that are on uh, the flag banners are starting to get mm -hmm. older looking instead of putting the one over the bridge. And then the one over the bridge could be used for Madawaska Studio Tour. Yes, it could be used for those groups. But our um, our flag banners would be, and they would stay up all year. Then we wouldn't be taking those ones down. Mm -hmm. And they could have a different message on them. Because I think there's 18 of those. But I just yeah. put this in a bu another budget request. So you could have different messages yeah. about discovering Eganville. Yeah. What is that? You've got the museum, you've got the caves, you get the geo trail, so, you know, numerous other things. So the only thing I would, I would hesitate to say on that is that every time you make it different, it's a cost for setup. So... To produce to produce eighteen is not is not um, wild, but to produce eighteen that are all different. That's like if every second one said discover Eganville, then at least we're only paying for one setup fee, and we got nine banners, right? And then the other ones in between could have different, you know, museum. Yeah, that's the way trail, promoting the town. Yeah. yeah, but I do like so we're not changing the name from EACDG. But we are still using dis hashtag Discover Eganville. So I love the idea of repetition as well. Mm -hmm. So if we did them on every second, mm -hmm. if we have to replace them anyway, this isn't a cost to EACDG. It's for mm -hmm. municipality. Mm -hmm. And but then if you had one that said the museum, what well, it could be teasers. Yeah, well, to to pique people's interest, it's like advertising and with the repetition, right? Well, that so, it's, so, it's, so it sticks. So you for your your um for, I haven't counted them, but for your count of eighteen, that's uh those are like the actual uh, township ones we have currently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it doesn't include the actual existing hydro poles either. That, that was the number I was given. I put in this application for the museum to create banners, and that was the total number that I was given was eighteen. Yeah, that's like right there more. We Maybe. did just count them because we counted oh, them when, we were, when we were talking to the Legion the of Remembrance Day yes. one. So I'll find out from Dana, but it could be 18 could very yeah. well be the number. Because I remember um, we discussed it when yeah. we were talking about uh, putting can of flags up on mm -hmm. uh, more, more of the hydro yeah. poles. Well, the ones that we got done, uh, if you've driven through Douglas, mm -hmm. uh, we got done in 2017. So it's the Canada flag and then the township logo and then the Canada flag and then the township logo. So those uh, were guaranteed for five years. They're five years old now. They're just starting to, to fade. And they're up all year long. Yeah. Uh, and they were about $5,000. And they, we bought 25 of them. And those, so I say if there's 18, we'll get the exact number. Mm -hmm. But if the, so if we plan to have a replacement for those, then I'm fine with how just kind of keeping with the banner consistent with how we, we've done previously, as mm -hmm. long as we have that. Uh, and then, but on your point, Tracy, um, for the actual, like I say, having specific ones for museum, I know in other municipalities, we keep it consistent for the original, but we can open it up afterwards, no different than we have in the arena for like, hey, if you want to, sponsor this or have this you can have it on every second hydro pole so we can open up it just got to be consistent okay. these other municipalities that do that like i know it's like Stitzel where my mom lives every second one is different and it's like yeah. museum sponsored by x mm -hmm. that's what yeah I, I just took an opportunity to make it enticing to draw people in as to why they're even reading this well because you could put up the geo trail right and it's directional <laughs> too right as to this way right. the trail or you could talk about you know, dinosaurs and all of that history of, that they have that people don't know about. So, so fun facts. So then the only issue is the BADGC has already bought that banner. Oh, we've had that banner for years. Okay, so then <laughs> we had the banner when you were on the committee. Yeah. Okay, so then if, well, they can. It depends. Like we should have it up. I I would say if no no one's planned in April, we can. I would say still we should still put it up in April. Put it up in April. Yeah, I, I like that. And, and then put those little, little, little. And then so put them all up at the same time. Yeah. In yeah. The spring and then and then when it comes down in May and the women's the women's assault sexual assault, assault center, center. There, and they and then, they've always paid to put theirs up and then there that goes down and then the authors festival once goes up and it stays all summer and then um okay. So the cost of the boom truck includes banners and yeah and flags. Yeah, we rent them for the day. Yeah, for the day. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, then all so is there them. any? Yeah. Is there any reason why we couldn't? It doesn't have to go up on that. We could put up the yeah. week before and get more exposure all the way for Burley. We could do it and hang it two weeks before the women's center banner goes. It would work. be up the whole month of April. <clears throat> oh, okay. Yeah. Now the, the and women's that May is the women's assault. Yes. 
Okay. 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 Well, we'll, I'll, I'll, That's a good start to the season. We'll bring it is too. We'll bring the cost of the flag banners to budget. Okay. And then we'll work with the boom truck for that if that is what works for. Perfect. Yeah. And if we were going to try and look at the ban, the banners are the vertical ones or the flags. Yeah. Sorry, the banners. If we wanted to look at them and say, oh, uh, the fossil tour or the uh, fishing dock. Yeah, the fishing dock and make a few new ones. We wouldn't have to replace all 18. Maybe we could do. Or maybe they're looking kind of. Yeah. Time to go. Yeah. Okay. They're, they're pretty faded. <clears throat> and then the they, region, don't, they just don't last in our weather. Yeah. Yeah. The Legion wanted to have banners as well to um, promote different events and things With like veterans, that. Right? Yes. And remember it's getting. That's what I was told. In other communities, yes, they actually will yeah, have photographs of people from yeah, which are they're wonderful. Yeah. yeah. But it was mentioned to me whether they how far they've gotten, I don't know. Oh, um, that was be nice to look mm -hmm. So for the women's sexual assault center, I'm going to tell them okay. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Now that we have a whole new plan. So is that a call to action, that banner? The for women's sexual assault? Like Call this number kind of thing if you're struggling or you need help. Do you know? Don't remember. I don't know. Neither do I. I'm sorry. I'm just curious. I don't, I'm not sure. Okay. And the idea is at our next meeting, we're going to, in new business, talk about some of the ideas, tourism plus other things. Anyhow, yeah. I, I would, whatever you want. Okay. But we're a team and I want your voice to be heard and we're, I want everybody to be heard. And I want to, I think that we, most of us probably heard the same thing during the things during the campaign, right? So I think if we put our heads together and we, let's not go too crazy, but we'll figure stuff out for 2023. Imagine it. Yes. Yeah. And collaborative. I just, I, We've been through a lot of orientation, and now that we've got a couple of meetings under our belts, I just thought that it was a good time for a call to action. Uh, any more discussion on the tourism strategy? It's going to be probably continuous with you. Okay. Uh, so the next uh, item is the draft Delcan site plan agreement. Uh, was ever able to review the site plan uh, control agreement? Yeah, one of the things that I didn't, it didn't occur to me when we first talked about the site plan agreement, one of the things was that we wanted them to buy water from our water plant. And I have been, I've been schooled in growing <clears throat> cannabis. Apparently you can't use water with chlorine in it. So they won't be able to buy water from us, which is disappointing. But on the other hand, knowing the capacity and any buildings or houses that want to be built. Can't, the, can't you simply take water out of the river? Can't we sell them water out of the river? Maybe not. <laughs> I like the weed. I like that idea. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, it's an, an initiative. Let's face it, I don't know what the, the, the daily record right now is but Daryl has told us a while ago at one time that the water of the river is almost pure. And we'll I, just leave that in their hands, I yeah. guess. Like, to be honest, they have a specific probably criteria. But if if uh, this has to go to another public meeting, mm -hmm. um it's posted on the website or it will be. So uh what I would say is that this is the draft uh agreement mm -hmm. so what i'm looking for from committee uh the two made well three major changes as you mentioned is the water um the second one is the clause i want to say it's 22 or 21 or 22 but i can have a look at it, it has to do with the complaint protocol so i wanted to make sure that was satisfactory and then um the other clause was the the point out sign so right now up in point out they are maintaining the garden around that sign they have agreed to continue to do that. They would like it removed from the agreement. So um, that is a request that they have made. And I said, I can't uh, approve removing a clause from the agreement without taking it to committee. If committee is fine with them removing that from the agreement, 
then I think they are prepared to sign it. I would bring it back to uh, council to have it signed, but not until after they hold or are holding another uh, open house, like a public house, a public meeting. It's not our meeting. They are holding it probably on our Zoom account, but they will be holding it to go through their PowerPoint and to discuss with the public one more time and address any other concerns that come up. So that still has to be done before we sign the agreement. And they're ready to sign the agreement, uh, except for that. The, sorry, there are two other things. So one is the uh, if we are OK to remove that from it. And the second thing is they still have to get the actual dollar number, the figures for the estimate for the landscaping, you know, they were going to put up some trees and some, mm -hmm. some they were going to do some, some interior work. Yeah. So the shrubbery, the idea is to have something between their the building and the playground. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So like what kind of, we want enough shrubbery or whatever they're going to do yeah. that there will be a distinct division between. So they, they need to provide me with estimates from their contractors for that at this point. That a dollar amount is going to go into this agreement, and they will they will make that deposit to the township. Once they complete that work, we can refund them their money. But if let's say this doesn't get off the ground, they don't end up uh, doing what they have promised to do, we will have those funds uh, available to complete what was started or or not uh, at that point. So can I ask why they took the point outside out? They. So I guess they're they're saying that it's it's a goodwill gesture. They're happy to do it. They want to continue to do it. But what happens if they sell their so what happens if they sell their business? Uh, and so if, if we we're obviously going to be permitting it to be run as a cannabis production facility. So if another person comes in, they may that may be something that they say, well, we don't want to do that. But because it's in the site plan agreement. Uh, they have to. So what they're saying is that them themselves, Delta and as they are right now, are more than happy to do it. What they don't want is for because everything in this agreement also goes forward with everybody, whoever buys the property for this purpose. Now, if you bought the property and you shut down the cannabis and you wanted to run a different kind of business out there, none of these terms apply to you. They only apply to you if you're using it for this function. So what they're saying is if somebody wanted to purchase the business and use it for this function, uh, that clause, um, they may not be interested in doing it. So they don't want to make it so that everybody in a day has to do it, although they insist that they are willing to continue to do it. So that is their, they just don't want it in the written agreement that follows the land. They're okay with it following them, just not the land. So... I don't know. I'll be honest with you. If it, you know, I'm not. Is it enforceable? It is when it's in the agreement, but it's it's. I you just. Know. Yeah. It was one of the things that they said that they do. I know. And that does not give me a good feeling. I understand. Yeah. And, and I know that yeah. it's a very small thing, mm -hmm. but. Uh, it was. It's a goodwill gesture. Okay. Putting it in the agreement now makes them obligated to do it. Do we leave it as a goodwill gesture? Um, that's their request. Hmm. Well, I, I think in the interest of having a business start, it might be still a good move to remove it because in the worst case scenario, we may have to put another sign and flower bed somewhere, I suppose, uh, if that's the issue, if they decide not to. Not to make it. And truth be told, it's been residents that have been keeping it up, planting the little flowers. <laughs> Um, and and in fact, a resident did help the owners of Delcan. Mm -hmm. Two residents helped them do the garden a few years ago. So, and I right. just I I just don't like when somebody says that they're going to do something and there's no good reason. Mm -hmm. and, and that's fine. And maybe the new sign and new flower bed would make a nice frontage for our new revived fire hall. Oh, <laughs> see how he snuck that in there. <laughs> but so then that is really just those it was just really those two conditions well three conditions i guess because it was just the yeah so the complaint management yeah. system are we comfortable with them uh giving us so they don't want the report to be made public i can fully understand that but they will supply it to me in confidence so that if um if the public is contacting council and saying listen we have called on this complaint multiple times they're not addressing it they're not dealing with it i will have their list of 
complaints that they, they, they did the full year. Here's all the complaints they received. Here's how they dealt with them. So you'll have that information to be able to have the conversation with the resident to say, yes, we are aware that those complaints came in. They did provide them to us. This is how they said they addressed them. And if obviously if they're not addressing them and they are against, uh, you know, some there's all kinds of regulations on older and different things. Those that was going to be the one of the I guess yeah. one of the questions uh, I always had is said maybe uh, mm -hmm. um, if we've been in discussions with the city of Pembroke is there mm -hmm. there one that has a strong fragrance obviously and I was just kind of curious on how uh, their complaint complaint management system was put in. They don't. So this is this is totally us. Nobody else has ever asked for this clause before. Okay. Uh, I know. I know yeah. there. Like that's a. It's a. That's a persistent issue in that, mm -hmm. and I don't know if it ever has been recognized. And it's under agriculture, so it's a. It, this is industrial. Yeah. So this one's yeah. a closed. This one's a closed unit. Yeah. Versus, yeah. And yeah. that's what they went through the filters and stuff. That's okay. Right. Yeah. So this is kind of a new, new age complaint system. We're well, kind of I think it came out of the public meeting when yeah. the residents were saying how or what if our complaints don't get answered yeah. and council kind of said okay we want to know how many complaints you have mm -hmm. and how are you addressing them and how quickly you're addressing them because um I i'm not sure that there's anything we can do to enforce that they better better address it other than we could report them to you know the federal government that has but, but how can yeah. it takes those complaints they do. as well they do so this is an added this is just the availability to so then we're aware, I guess. Yeah, but I mean, these are health Canada rules. Yes. Yeah. You don't want to break those rules or you will be shut down. Right. Right. But this allowed us to actually have that information. Okay. Um, so I like that though. Yeah. I want to know. Yeah. Well, that's why we asked for it, but they don't want it public, which I, you know, what it is their own personal business. The complaints and how they address them and whatever so i understand that but they're willing to supply us with the document if we keep it confidential all right that's good so you will revise make those revisions and provide it with one more one more look at it before we sure yes if that is the direction yeah. that i received today i will re re revise it by uh removing yeah. the foi amount adding their dollar amount which they haven't given me yet uh, and uh, then they will have to host their public meeting before uh, this comes forward by bylaw protection. And we will get an invitation to that public meeting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to hear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh no. I, yeah. I yeah I'll hundred percent sit in on that. Um, and it's like not that's a that's public it. meeting. It's their information. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to sit in. Right. And yeah. Sorry. Like it's not yeah, ours. I should be. I, said, yeah. I yeah. I know. It's not. Yeah. Yeah. They already had their public meeting. They're not required to do it, but they agreed to do it, and so they they will do. It's not again. That's not in the agreement either. That's not something that's enforceable. But they have agreed to do it, and and so so really so we have the complaint management. So that's yeah. yes. The owner agrees to maintain the form of welcome sign. We'll plan to remove that if council is good with that. Yeah. Okay. Um. Then the only remaining is just the landscaping items. Yeah, the estimate for yeah. okay. yeah. and that'll be detailed, obviously, so we know what we're yes to be expected. Yeah, Sounds well, good. in the in the agreement, I think it's just an amount, yeah. but they will give me. I will have that. Uh, yeah, I'd like to know site. what's going yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because I remember, I know previously, there's, I know it wasn't going to be built in here, but I know, especially if this ends up moving forward, that they had uh, mm -hmm. shown a gesture of goodwill to helping fundraise for their future playground there as well. So yeah. That was a discussion. So we'll just want to make yeah. sure we stay in contact with us well. So. Yeah. Yeah. And the site mm -hmm. plan has been uh, submitted and conditionally approved. Mm -hmm. uh, that that authority was delegated to Bruce. So it, it, but there are still conditions on it, which is typical. That's not unusual. Yeah. So um yeah, I can certainly bring that forward uh if council wants to see the site plan and the conditions. Okay. Like at the next when I bring yeah, this, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to see yeah, I'd like to see it too. Yeah. Okay. Just the most updated. I think we have a previous version, but sure. Yeah, I can do that. Um, Besides that, uh, was there anything else within the Dell can that you need us to confirm in it? Well, if that's good, I will uh, advise them that uh, maybe council has directed that we can remove that clause. They'll be happy to hear that. Wait until they get the estimate, set up a public meeting with them. And I'm not excuse me, I'm like I'm saying it. I know. I set, set up a, a consultation set up an session okay. uh, with yeah. them. And we will advertise that, of course, publicly uh, at least 20 days in advance uh, before the um, before this comes back for signing. 
And the first statement that led into the discussion was about water. Oh, yes. Was that to do with them? Yes. Okay, they had requested getting potable water or industrial use water from us. No, we... I had requested that they purchase the water from us. Yes, okay. To ease the burden <clears throat> on the villagers' uh, water and sewer. But since then, we've realized, and I don't know what, whether it's because people are they're at home all day now or what, but our consumption has gone up and Daryl gave us some stats on how many more homes and businesses could be on our water system. So in the end, this might not be the worst thing. Okay. Yeah, and the, and the chlorine content, like they yes. tested the water and it's not great for plant growth. So but there should be a solution for them if we think the business is worth supporting or, promote or uh, going along with then there may be private land only there, like on Kelly's Lake or someplace where we can. It's close. Yeah, they're pretty close. There'll be yeah. something. They're purchasing their water uh, from another organization, and they also have to um, dispose of their water, which is part of their site plan, yeah. mm -hmm. offsite. So okay. uh, it's not going into the uh, into the system. Yeah, there. for the industrial use. Yeah. 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 Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions or comments for a site plan group? Okay. Uh, Winterfest update, Tracy. Yeah. Did we want to show anything at this time? Annette? I can. If free. you'd like, I can bring up the. Uh... Um, so members of the um, Youth Action Committee, uh, myself, there's a small handful of us planning a Winterfest event with Dana's support as well. And Annette, um, we're looking at the first weekend of March break. We still have many things to confirm this week. By Friday, we should have everything nailed down. Uh, this is my spreadsheet. Technology is not out. our friend today. Yeah, so this is uh, my planning worksheet. So we're having a team dance um, on the Friday night, or youth dance, I should say. We're looking at having something for teens as well, but I think we'll piggyback to youth, so they have something exciting to do. We've got beaver tails pop up for the weekend. You, know, you, can, you can see all of the activity there. There's things that are taking place um, at the museum and other locations in town. The interesting one is uh, the Saturday. So we're looking at a progressive foodie event to support our local restaurants. And I don't know if you've ever been to a progressive dinner party where you start somewhere and you end up somewhere else. Yep. So it's that kind of concept, but more um, on the commercial <clears throat> side, obviously. Uh, there's things, you know, we want to do like a polar dip, but I don't know, given this weather and ease of, you know, liability and having the, you know, working with the fire department and that kind of thing. John and I were prepared to do a oh, polar well. dip. So. <laughs> Will you really do it? <laughs> we might want to park that one for okay. later. So I wonder. Unless it's too warm. So the, so the, so you like freezing cold weather or freezing cold water and ghosts. I'm getting to know you a lot better today. Um, if it helps the kids. So it seems that these are done all over the place. I will not be doing it. Yeah, no, they're, However, they're, they're popular. Yeah, definitely. It, they they do appear to be popular. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if the paramedic service has ever done one in Renfrew County. Well, the, the idea is from this was working with the gentleman from Petawawa. Yeah. Uh, I forget his Colin. name. A moment, Colin. Yeah. They've done it. So he's kind of shared the concept with me and, and what needs to be done from, you know, working with the fire department, having a heated vehicle, they okay. rented hot tubs, you know, there's various things. Does water rescue. Yes, right. but that's we, why. if we did this at Rotary Beach, it's water, you walk in access. Right. It's not quite the same as going in somewhere over your head, unless you're going further. Right. But it could be a quick dip and out, you know, for a diverse one. Yeah. Um, so the idea with that on the Sunday was planning a whole community activity around it and having a bonfire, um, barbecue, food, you know, you've got the skating going yeah. on, and then jumping back to a bit for the Saturday. So we were, part of it is organizing an artisan market at the museum. Um, I've also invited Lisa Blair, Whiskers and Alley Cats, to bring in some kitty cats. She has some munchkins, well, you know, munchkins are like little wee eggs like this, rescues. So just to come in and talk about, because we I call them this Operation Stray Cat, because we've got a significant cat problem in town we with strays. So just mm -hmm. in terms of, and also a mental health thing initiative too, come in and snuggle some kitty cats and, and it promotes her adoption and getting these kids, you know, new homes. And also she wanted to do some sort of educational and awareness of uh, the situation, caring for cats and all that kind of stuff. So 
full list of activities. We just have, as I said, a few more things to confirm and we'll nail that, nail that down by Friday. That's great. Apparently I'm doing the ice skating. Yes, you are. So all of this is working with local businesses. So you're talking about shopping local, things like, oh, we need some drinks and pop for an event. Let's go buy that from you know, Papa Ron's, the variety yep. store. We're hosting at the museum. Let's order some pizzas, you know, from Pizza Pizza, uh, Milano's to Subway to just trying to be inclusive of everyone, yep. which is not is not easy to do. But I just want you guys to know this is a seriously pared down less yes. than the list we started with. <laughs> yeah. Tracy said that I almost I didn't know what to do with it. You ask a marketing person to do an event. <laughs> this is what happened. Oh. Anyway, so yes, it is pared down, and there may be some things that come off the list, um, depending on availability. But I think it's a, I think it's a good jam-packed weekend so far. Yes. We have. Yeah, it would be fantastic. Yeah. And target dates are. So the first date is the would be the youth dance on the Friday night at March tenth. So members of the youth group will be chaperoning because that's one of the challenges I think Jane has had in the past. So no problem, we'll have some chaperones. Um, if the curling club doesn't work out, you know, I think we could do darts and trivia with teens in the basement of the Legion. Yep. Where the dance is taking place upstairs. So I was really hoping like if the curling club renovations were done that we could showcase the curling club with, the, mm -hmm. uh, I think, where did I say, a breakfast? Yeah, something yeah. Like, we'll yeah, know. Uh, to, I think end of day today, Dana said for that. Okay, but they I didn't realize too, they have like foosball tables there, dartboards. Yes. I, mean, I think there's Escape. anything <laughs> that could appeal to teens. Yeah, it'd be great to have something there for teens. But the escape room is cool. Yeah, I find teens are often left out with some, like, yeah, you know, events, and plus getting them to go is probably a challenge too, right? <laughs> yeah, the renovations will be done by then. So oh, they will, yeah. So I think they're going to do the um. I think they're going to keep the escape room open. Yeah, that's from what I said. hear. So, oh, uh, so people will be able to get in and and, and book that. And uh, we'll just need to support them in promoting it. That yeah. they need to register like a group of four to six. Mm -hmm. I think it is. And then yeah, yeah, because I think you know the the curling club has been under renovations. Prior to that, it was the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So now is the time to showcase. Look at this amazing curling club that we have that's accessible mm -hmm. yeah. through an enormous grant. It's supposed to be done this week. So. Fingers crossed. That ramp is substantial. Yeah. You can only go up percentage. That's percentage. Yeah, I don't know. It's so if it is done next week, then we can uh, walk through it for the next council meeting. Sure, I can. Uh, yeah. Sure. Well, we're, we're, well, we're, we're all in the same area. So. Okay. <laughs> I don't live in your area. Well, we have to come in for the council. <laughs> I can pick you up on the way. That's no problem. And then that, so by, uh, those, those dates, that would probably, is that the March break? Yeah, the first adopted? weekend. Oh, okay. And then also within the plan and what we'll include in the communications is everything else happening in town. So the library has, you know, but we've called this March Madness to align with the library because yep. they have a bunch of events. That's all in the schedules. So when we do the flyer to promote it, we'll have everything in there. The curling club, the library, the museum. Well, in youth night at the library, they get so many uh, the teens and kids that go there. It's, yeah. You know, same as your games night. It's really good. But I find they cater more to like the younger uh, preteen, mm -hmm. which makes sense, right? So yeah. It, it, I just find the gap with the teens is getting them more greater support. Well, get them out of the house. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, I think the we best the best... turn into teens. You'll see. Oh, I'll be. <laughs> the best thing is I'll be I'll be chaperoning like every youth dance. I'll do the dance. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Oh, no problem. I'll drive you there, Reagan. Yeah, no they won't want you to do that. I was going to say for advertising, we'll just get John in a nice Speedo and put him on a oh, so it. polar dip. It'd be perfect. Yeah. So you're going to be there to put the Holy Ghost between Reagan and the balloon. Oh, yeah. You're the old school. She old won't school. let you go. Yeah. <laughs> Sandra's <laughs> laughing. Another use of ghosts. 100%. Right? But no, just keep us in the loop. So when you finalize on Friday, um, are you able to uh, send that out to us? So then, yeah, we uh, it's I think the unknown right now is the polar dip, for in, basically. Oh, okay. We can go yeah. ahead with that with the fire department, and awesome. having a bonfire. And the we're thinking of the lot across from the rink, because there's lots mm -hmm. of parking there. So we could have a community barbecue, or you know, have fire, and then when people finish with the dip, they can come sit by the fire. I love it. Have music, and then there's skating going on. So there's a little bit of a buzz of things happening at the rink. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be great. Yeah, it's tiny. You know, Media coverage as well for the polar dip. <laughs> John great. in a speedo. Mm -hmm. How do you know he even has one? 
That's concerning. <laughs> and she never told me I had to wear a suit. Yeah, he was going to go in the buff, but you know, <laughs> it's not that kind of event. <laughs> There's a group of women who do this. Kristen Sperger's wife is one of them. Hillary mm -hmm. as well. So, so we'll we'll put it there. yes, so we thought it would be a great idea to have it here, mm -hmm. seeing how we've got the river. And I think it's a great idea. I'm I, I just I know that the suggestion in the email was St. John's Ambulance, mm -hmm. which is fantastic. But I'm just wondering if our own paramedic service has experience with it. Yeah. And fire. Uh, we talked to the chief today, and they would be on hand with the rescue van. So that when they get out of the water, the rescue they could go into a warm rescue, then take them to the the arena, mm -hmm. go ahead in there and get into your change room. So they're just they're going to be a little taxi. So no hot tub. Back and forth. No, I don't. Well, I mean, I'll leave that up to you guys. But... Are you supplying it? <laughs> well, they rented it in Petawawa. They rented a hot tub. Yeah. That's crazy. So, I don't know. Mm -hmm. so. I wonder how much that was. You gave me the company name. I'd have to look into it. Yeah, there were no numbers attached to it. But I think it would be a good draw having the polar dip if we can work through the logistics of doing it. But I think the setup of having the bonfire, mm -hmm. stating polar dip, barbecue, music, you've sort of kept everything in that quadrant. Same with Saturday. We're keeping it by the museum and the um, restaurants. So yes. it's contained. Yeah. I'm still waiting to hear if... Um, Nancy Jameson is available with the horse and buggy, but that was the thinking, and maybe we could pick up some seniors or whoever's interested to come down to, you know, downtown. Kind of I, I will I say it's, it's, I'm not sure it's senior friendly. I even have trouble getting it. I've never been it. in it, so I don't know. It's so cool. It's yeah. so bloody cool. Maria Robinson, James Rose, and I, we had the whole Santa Claus parade experience on that, in that buggy. And one other thing I like too, we're doing movies, Night at the Museum. Movies for kids. We're but we're not sleeping at the no, museum. No, not sleeping. No, not at, not at this time. I think in the future, that's the thinking. We'll have overnight for kids, but we're going to play the the movie night at the museum. Yeah. So. But Tracy thought that I was actually going to sleep on the floor of the museum, which was not going to happen. Brent probably would. Oh, Brent, what? He's young. Yeah. Thank you. I'd get up. I'd be like. So we'll have food and pizza and snacks and popcorn and all that kind of stuff. Nice. Us. Yeah. Nice. Perfect. Well, this work is posted. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Hello. Uh, and then the last item we have is the request for letter support for Stacey Lacombe to reopen the service on Terra and Eganville. Yeah. So uh, she's she is investigating mm -hmm. this. Um, and in order to do anything, she needs a letter of support. I reached out to my contact or our contact at the Ministry of Transportation. Uh, he hasn't gotten back to me yet, but I'm going to put them in touch so that she has a point of contact at the MTO. Are you guys okay if I write a letter of support? Yeah, absolutely. Great. Definitely. Because that's a whole big problem. <laughs> I think Santa Lou is probably the closest one here, and I think we need from Barry Spain to go to Santa Lou. And so I was getting my hair cut just down from the old service Ontario, and a gentleman came in and he said, is there no service on Terra? He called it the DMV too. I kept calling it the DMV when I was emailing uh, an app. Yeah, just an old you don't app. even know what the DMV is, do you? No, I do. No, you do. Okay. <laughs> it wasn't my time, but that's it. It's so old. Yeah, it's old for even money. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, but uh, she was also speaking with the previous owner, and the previous owner said, yes, you need letters of support. Mm -hmm. And to Merv's point, I'm sure we could get a letter of support from our neighbors. Uh, and the gentleman, so the gentleman came in, I was getting my hair cut, and he was shocked. And he's, he said, where do I go, Renfrew or Pembroke? And I said, I would go to Renfrew because I wasn't even sure the hours of operation in Killaloo. Yeah. Well, we were the, the we were the, yeah, uh, yeah, so it's, they're not open on Mondays. I, I knew not, that they had some. They're, not open, sure. they're open on Saturday, but they're not open on Monday. Right. Well, for a period of time, the last couple of years, that was one of two in Renfrew County that was even open, I thought, yeah. during COVID. Like for really? Reason, is the lineups on that were but way down the street on John Street there. So, no, I, 100% it makes the most sense. Like, we're, we're geographically yep. located. I think, yeah, whenever you need the letter, just perfect. We'll do and I'll up. ask uh, North Algon Over Forest, the Gotham Gone and Whitewater Region. I think they, those would be the three that could probably come. I would even ask Adam some Bromley. Yeah, okay. Good idea. Perfect. 
Because I mean, yep. the bra the bra yep. only ends. Yeah. Yep. 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 Perfect. Not everything's about Addison. <laughs> Just go Kelly's corner. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Not make sense. Uh, so establish the next meeting. February twenty. Perfect. First. February twenty first. Twelve thirty at the curling club. Twelve thirty at the curling club. Everyone. Uh, media session. Um, the only question I had was, uh, what's happening with the um, fire chief recruitment? <laughs> we'll know more after our closed session. Oh, okay. Oh, you, she wasn't here. I don't think when I added to the agenda. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Sorry. I, I was like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the chief promised something that he might not be the chief. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the okay. fire truck, or the public oh. truck, or the rescue van. Oh, okay. Okay, so more We're, information to come then. Yeah, before we, that was in addition to the agenda for a closed session. I so okay. we have two closed sessions, so that's one of them. All right, thank you. Good, I'll head up and you guys can get to it. Perfect. There we go. Let's take five. Take five now then. Okay, we'll take five minutes and then I'll bring us in the closed session out here.
Okay, we are on. Perfect. I just need a so that a mover to proceed in the close. The committee proceed in closed session in accordance with the municipal act 2001, section 239.2. B being a personal matter about an identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees, to discuss the fire chief recruitment in section 239.2. <laughs> K being a position, plan, procedure, criteria, or instruction to be applied to negotiations for the operations of Egan Generation Corp, for which the township is the owner. Could I please have a mover? Councillor Buckwald, Councillor Epps, all those in favor? Perfect. Thank you very much. And we are now in close. I'll wait for us to get, be removed from live.
Bill. Uh, actually, I live in Groton. Thanks. I had home and feed my kids. Four oh, years. Well, now or I could make it home. Perfect. I could make uh, it home easily. Yeah. So that I'm committee. Going to do some jobbing, but that's not going to happen. One second. Well, that committee moves that. out of closed oh, session to rise and report. The committee met to receive information, give staff direction regarding improvement of new fire chief operation, legal generation court, and approved minutes from January 10th, 2023. Can you please have a mover? Tracy, perfect. All those in favor? Perfect. Could I please ask for an adjournment of the meeting? Kevin Mover, Mr. Epps. Everyone, please back. Yep. Tracy, all those in favor? Perfect. Thank you very much. Do you want to go home? I'm going to, yeah. Are you staying? No, I'm going to go 